Hi everyone, Lori Marie, mixed media artist here in Vallejo, California. I have some things I want to share with you first before we get into our project today. I just want to say thank you to you subscribers. Uh, your support has been amazing and it uh, helps me c to continue to hop on that table and have fun. I never feel alone when I'm making a video. I have received some amazing gifts from some of you and I just want to say thank you so much. Um, the first thing I have that I want to share with you, this is from Jan and this is my magic wand. I don't think that's what she calls it, but that's what I call it. And then from uh, Rosanna, this <laughs> is the most amazing doll. I have her sitting in my studio. She actually sits in a bird cage holding a, a nest of real quail eggs. And her name is Australis. And uh, I'm going to nickname her Aries because I can remember that. But isn't she? Look at, look at her little feet, her hands, her little face. She's incredible. I love her. And yesterday I got a box. You just sit right there with your gorgeous earrings. I got a box yesterday from Chroma Arts. And I told her that I had read the note, but I didn't go through the box yet. And um, she's uh, given me all kinds of goodies. I haven't opened them yet. They're tied up in a ribbon. So let's visit the table and see what she's given us. So this is the package, the way that I got it. And it's a thank you note. Thank you so much for showing all that you do on your channel. For someone new to the art world, it means tons. I'm so excited to find people who are willing to teach. Now I will leave a link to her channel because she is the queen of... Um, Oh, dirty pores and things like that. Poor painting. So look at this little package right here with oh, oh my goodness, all of these fun little pictures. It looks like they're on the back of a calendar, maybe. Maybe they came from a calendar. Looks like they did. Oh, those will be wonderful. She said she made this tag with uh, some of my directions. This is one of her pore paintings right here that she cuts up. She puts it on paper, I think, and then she cuts it up and makes jewelry with it. So that's very exciting. An old book. Oh, you know I'll use that. Look at that old book. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yep. And a watercolor background. And some of her pore paintings. Now you get to see what she does. Oh, these are gorgeous. These are on canvas. Maybe that's what she does it on is canvas. Yes, these are gorgeous. I will use these for backgrounds in one way or another. They're beautiful. So Chroma Storm Arts, thank you so much for sending me the gift. And let's go on with our project for today, which is Go Big or Go Home Fabric Collage. Oh my gosh, you guys, I got so excited about my gifts, I forgot to introduce the piece. You want up, Hudson? You want up? Come say hi. Come here. All right, so we did these smaller flower rose pieces. I made two of them. I love them. They're very fun. And so, as per my usual, I wanted to bump it up a little bit. So I made the roses, the flowers, out of scrap fabric. Okay, and this is what I made. Oh, I think I can get the whole thing on the screen. If I move it toward my face, that's good. So this is scrap fabric making the flower and the stem <laughs> and the leaves. So this is what we're going to work on today. We are going to make the flower and the stem and the leaves uh, in part one. And then we'll do the background in part two. 
So it's a twofer. See on the table. Okay, let's talk about the material that we're going to use for that go big or go home big rose collage. And these are the greens I'm going to use for the leaves. Here's some I've already torn into squares. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is what I used for the um, stem of the rose. We'll get back to that as well. And we're going to do a brightly colored rose with these fun colors. And we'll just use some squares of each color. It's going to be nice and bright, huh? Whew. Yeah. So what I like to do, and I've already got some of the leaves cut in, or they're torn actually because I like the frayed edge on the squares. So what I do is I just take a piece of fabric, <clears throat> make sure that the edge of it is already torn so that it's already got that frayed look. Snip it about where I want it, about right there. And then hang on to your ears. Then I just rip it so that it's about the, the width that I want. And then I just go down that strip. <coughs> Excuse me. And I just snip it. The squares are what? Maybe one by one. The size doesn't matter. You can make them whatever size you want. And then just go through and rip those squares. Okay? So this will be part of the flower. And I'll do that to all of these fabric choices. These are the leaves. So I would do that to my leaf choice colors, which I chose basically some greens. And here's the beautiful brown that I'm going to use for the stem. I just want to take a moment and tell Jan thank you for these pieces. Her sister's a quilter, so she uh, brought all, a lot of fun fabric pieces in for us to use. So what I did is I just ripped what I want for the stem. This is going to be way too long for the stem, but that's okay. And then what I'll do is I'll go in and I will create some of those squares. Mod Podge on my fingers. And what I'm going to do when I glue this down onto the deli sheet, I'm going to arrange these so that they kind of look like thorns under the stem. Alright, that'll be more clear when we start gluing. But I thought that would be kind of fun to create some thorns. So I have my deli sheet in front of me and tracing paper should probably work just fine on a project like this. I just happen to have a whole bunch of deli sheets. So I'm just going to put a strip of Mod Podge down on my deli sheet and then I'm going to put a few of the small rectangles down. using those as thorns. I thought that was kind of original. If you haven't worked with Mod Podge and fabric, it's pretty magic. Totally changes the texture of the of the fabric. Makes it like leather. It's really quite cool. All right, so let's gonna let's see what's gonna happen here. Yep, that's good. A little bit more Mod Podge down the center there for that center piece of fabric. I made this a little bit thinner than some of them. Kind of like it. in my world. So now I'm going to show you what I've done before. And 
here is, this, as you can see, this is a much thicker stem. I like the thinner stem, stem better. And then this is the um, collage for the, the leaves. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tear some pieces for the bright flower we're going to make. Okay, so I've got all my squares ripped. I don't care that there's strings hanging. That's fine with me. I just <laughs> glue everything down. So I've got all my squares and I have my deli sheet. So if you're using tracing paper, let's see how big this is. This is 11 by 11, 10 by 10, 10 by 11, something like that. Okay, and I'm just going to start in the center with my Mod Podge. Mine all came ripped for some reason. My deli sheets all came ripped for some reason. <clears throat> and I'm just going to be start taking the squares and gluing them down. And I'm going to work out and around in a circle. And I'm going to completely fill... Oh, there's two there. I'm going to completely fill this deli sheet with these squares. So I want you to just take a little peek at how this is looking as I work outward. Bringing in some fun colors of the fabrics that we tore up. Alright, ta-da gang! So brush, Mod Podge, fabric, deli sheet, tracing paper, whatever. You saw the pile of fabric that I started off with and this is what I have left. So it takes quite a bit to cover it. You can go back through. I get a little something on my brush. And uh, add some more color in areas if you think that it's too bland. This looks pretty good. Looks pretty evenly dispersed. So I can cut this when it's dry. I'm gonna let it dry. Okay, I've cut a couple of leaves out of here for another piece, but this is the, uh, the green and the stem. So I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm just going to cut out a couple of leaves here, just very simple leaves, and I want kind of a square bottom on them. This is nice and dry, so this will be a leaf. And we'll probably have like three or four leaves on the finished piece. So there's a thread. Love the threads, actually. Okay, so we'll have three or four of those. And then on the stem, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it and make sure that it has some thorns on it. All right, on the back of this, which of course I have a deli sheet, you have whatever you have, and I'm just going to loosely go around here and create the flower. We do not want it exactly round, that would be boring. And then, and we can create more wiggles when we cut it, of course. So I'm just going to make a spiral and then come back hold your pen loosely so that it creates some fun movement there and that's where I'm gonna cut it out I'm just gonna start to cut it out with you so we'll go around the edge like this and just cut that out Then after I get that done then I will go into the spiral area and follow that line around up to the spiral and then back. Now I'm cutting the inner part of the spiral and here again I'm just going kind of, the line is just purely a suggestion. I'm going to go kind of wonky. Makes it way more fun. And now I'm just heading back on the other line and I'm still kind of freeforming it. Oh, my tummy's growling. <laughs> That's hilarious. All 
All right, you get the idea. I'm just going to finish the inside of this spiral. Going wonky wonky, free form, free form, until I run out of flower. And this final edge is a bit pointy for me, so I just go in and just round that. So it has more of an edge like that than that pointed edge. I don't care for that pointed edge so much. Ta da! <laughs> Here's your go bigger, go home rose. <laughs> And here is the stem with the thorns on it. And here are, I cut out four because I don't know how many we're going to need. Usually just three. But look at how fun those leaves are. Oh my goodness. So this is the collage part. And we will work on the background next.